Before we begin this morning, we would like to remind all gathered here of the importance, especially as our hospitals exceed the capacity that they are able to handle for the coronavirus, to please, please make sure that you keep your face coverings over the nose, under the chin, please, for the safety of everyone. One of our doctors here reminded us just of how important it is that Sentara Lee is really at its capacity. Thank you so much. So good morning and welcome to the Church of St. Gregory the Great. As we celebrate the third Sunday in ordinary time, we repent from our evil ways and we ask the Lord to teach us his ways. Our Mass intention for this morning is for the living and deceased of the parish. Our celebrant is our pastor, Father Eric. Please stand and greet the entrance procession. Come to celebrate together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Today in the Gospel, Jesus called the apostles to be fishers of men. Today we ask the Lord to, be, to help us as well and ask us for the power of his forgiveness. He was said to heal the contrite, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You pray for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, so that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, saying, Set out for the great city of Nineveh and announce to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk announcing, Forty days more and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way. He repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. 
from now on, let those having wives act as not having them, those weeping as not weeping, those rejoicing as not rejoicing, those buying as not owning, those using the world as not using it fully. For the world in its present form is passing away. The word of the Lord. the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is a time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. He said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked along a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in the boat, mending their nets. So he called to them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat, along with the hired men, and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. From the time we are in school till we decide what career we're going to go, we are thinking about what we will do for the rest of our lives. Will we be an, a lawyer? Will we be a, a politician? Will we be a fisherman? Will we be a, a plumber? Will we be a, a any number of things that we could use our life, young, our young life, to prepare for us? Many of us go to college or to grad school and prepare for whatever that would be. Or we might go to a trade school and prepare to become an electrician or whatever, whatever it calls us to be. But we have a definite inkling within ourselves of what we're going to do with the rest of our lives. And just as life comes to us as well, sometimes it involves a career change after a number of years. And it might require more schooling or deciding whether or not we can go to another job and make our, make our ends meet or to, to, to support our family and understand what, God, what, what is given to us that we need to do. But a career change is something that can be very important because we just sometimes don't know and we get bored with our job, we get bored with this, we get bored with that. And so we want to try something else. Well, today in the gospel, the, the Peter, James, and John, and Andrew, they had a career change, but a little different. They were now called by the Lord to, to do something different. And even though that might, fishermen might not have been a lot of education, they were thrust into the world to, to preach and learn about the word of God and the gospel and transform their lives. I'm sure none of them thought about that early. They didn't say, oh yes, I'm going to be an apostle. Oh, yes, I'm going to be a disciple of the Lord, and I'm going to do what he asked me to do. Though he just called them abruptly, maybe after a little bit of, of, of training, 
But he said, come on, I need you. I need you to help me with my church. I need you to help me with people. I need you to do the word of God within your lives. And so with that was their career change. I'm sure most of all, Peter was the one that resisted most from what we understand. Because he was very happy being a fisherman. Very happy supporting his family. And pretty much at odds with the Lord at times because he was not always sure of what the Lord was trying to do. And yet in the end he realized that what he, what he was called to do was to be that person. To lead the church after Christ, after Christ's death and resurrection. To become the person who emulated him the most. And it's a great thing to see within our very lives. Because all of us, no matter who we are, we are called to that discipleship. We are called to get out of our boats, stop mending our nets, and do what the Lord asks us to do. To come before him and ask him to help us with our lives. Help us to lead by our lives and become the disciples that Jesus wants us to be. Career changes are good, but sometimes faith changes are even better. To look within ourselves and say, is my faith strong enough to do this? Is my faith ready to accept the responsibility of bringing God's word to people? Is my faith well enough to lead by example? Because most of all we do is people look at us different sometimes because we have that word Catholic behind our names. And so the people of our world sometimes say, well, they're called sometimes to a higher power. They look at us because we do, have, we do have a sense of worship, and we do have a sense of leadership, and we have a sense of believing, believing in Christ, to accept him in our lives. We don't need a career change. Sometimes we need a faith change. Let us ask the Lord to give us that faith change. Help us to lead people to the word of God. For there's nothing greater than one, one for oneself, to lead someone to the kingdom of heaven and lead them to the power of salvation. Sometimes that's a job well done. May take a while, may take years, but in essence, if we help somebody get to heaven, we're doing our job. We are acting on our discipleship. So we pray today that God may bless us, that God may keep us from sin and turn us to the gospel. And in turning to the gospel, we can be fishers of men. I believe in one God, Father the Almighty, heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father, be for all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, to him all things are made, for our spent and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, death was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand. And see, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and life for the world to come. Amen. With confidence in our God, let us present our prayers with hope and faith that Christians
compelled by the word of God, strive for reconciliation and unified joy in the gospel, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of the world act with wise compassion, promoting a preference for the poor of the world, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the world's commitment to human dignity may embrace its fragile beginnings and natural ends, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the poor and the needy feel God's loving hand in their lives through the love of God's people, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all the faithfully departed, especially Reuben Vidangal, Gongolo Lazara, and Florence Apita, through the mercy of God, rest in peace, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And we, and we pray for our government this day, that those who lead us may respect life from, nat from the beginning to natural death and understand that that is God's work within us. We pray to the Lord. Lord Gracious Lord, listen to the prayers we present to you. Change our hearts by the power of your spirit through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. We seek today to know the way of our Lord. What are his ways? Truthful, compassion, kindness, goodness, upright, humble, and loving. Jesus asked those he is calling to leave everything behind to become fishers of men. Together, we are the disciples he is calling here at St. Gregory the Great Parish. And who are we willing to leave behind through our complacency? Through our charitable works, ministries, and sacraments, we are given the opportunity to evangelize and share the gospel that is proclaimed today by Jesus, announcing that this is the time of fulfillment and that the kingdom of God is at hand. As the apostles abandoned their nets, are we willing to abandon a portion of what we have been given to serve the ways of our Lord, who gave his everything for the salvation of all? my friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that we may profit for our salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now profess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised the Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal Mystery. And so with all the angels we proclaim you. As a joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, the gifts we pray by, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Bury our bishop and all the clergy and people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles, Andrew, Peter, James, and John, and all the saints who have pleased you for throughout the ages, that we may merit to be coheres to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And let us now pray together in those words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace.
This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to this table. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And as we get ready to receive communion, we offer the prayer for those who could not be with us from St. Alphonsus. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
All youth of the parish, 6th grade through 12th grade, are invited to join St. Gregory Youth Group this Sunday from 2.30 to 4.30 p.m. for a meeting on the sanctity of human life. Middle school will meet in the assembly room, and high school will meet in the new youth house. Please remain in your pews as the ushers help us to exit while maintaining social distance. We are always grateful for your presence with us. Have a wonderful week, and may our prayer be that we are all good fishers for God's kingdom. Let us pray. Grant we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
and I thank you once more for bringing your children to Mass this morning. The Lord be with you. And God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let's go receive the gift of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Deep.